Here's Jalen Brown up top with the ball. He tried to get the switch onto Curry, but number 30's fellow splash brother Klay Thompson wasn't having it and fought over the screen like the warrior he is. Brown then said, okay, no problem, as he turned the corner and charged his way to the rim like a locomotive with a full head of steam. Unfortunately for the Celtics superstar, the NBA as a whole somehow allowed the Golden State Warriors to draft Trace Jackson Davis with the 57th pick who met him up top and stuffed what would have been an epic ESPN highlight reel. 57th. Sheesh, guys. This is the 57th pick blocking and humiliating a superstar who just signed the richest deal in NBA history. This wasn't supposed to happen. And if there was any moment that the league knew it made a mistake by letting the Warriors draft Trace Jackson Davis at 57, it was here and then against the Boston Celtics on December 19th. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into the heart of all this. If there was one thing the Warriors lacked over the past few years, it was an athletic center who could soar high into the skies and finish above the rim. James Wiseman was supposed to fill that position, but unfortunately, his development on the little things wasn't fast enough for him to join in on Steph Curry's championship window, so the Warriors had no choice but to trade Big Jim. Kevon Looney, or Loon God as they call him in the Bay Area, is a solid center, a rebound machine, but with multiple hip surgeries early in his career, there was a limit to what he could do from a vertical standpoint. And with the league getting bigger, faster, and stronger, the Warriors needed a big of their own to fight fire with fire, otherwise they were going to get left behind. There was a sprinkle of hope when reports came out saying the Warriors were thinking about drafting 7'1 Derek Lively, but unfortunately the Mavericks took him at 12 and the Warriors ended up drafting another guard at 19. In hindsight, drafting Brandon Podzimski was an absolute monster move, and acquiring him is a success story in and of itself. But at the time, Warriors fans were losing it. Another guard when we already have a team filled with guards? How small does Kerr want to go? Is he out of his mind? These were the sediments going around Dub Nation at the time. But anyway, as the draft was about to conclude, it happened. Somehow, some way, 56 NBA teams passed on a 6'9", 250-pound athletic beast who just averaged 21 points, 11 rebounds, and 3 blocks a game in college. He wasn't exactly Joel Embiid, Giannis, or Jokic, but he was still a monster who just finished wreaking havoc in the NCAA, and a player like that was exactly what the Warriors needed. Like, for the first time in a long time, the Warriors finally have a rim protector. I mean, just check out this play here, where Jalen Brown beats Podzimski off the dribble. In the past, this would have been a sure bucket, but with TJD on defense, teams now have to think twice when attacking the Warriors' rim. There ain't gonna be any free lunches anymore. And then on offense, Golden State finally has their pick-and-roll lob threat. Like, check this sweet rookie-to-rookie -rookie play between Podzimski and Jackson Davis against Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. Curry must be loving the addition of Trace, but perhaps more than Curry, Clay Thompson is probably appreciating TJD even more. I mean, with how teams have to stick to Clay because of his marksmanship abilities, someone like TJD really opens up options for Clay on the perimeter to make better decisions. It's a fact that currently, Trace isn't a three point threat, but the man does everything else right such as making the right plays, taking advantage of mismatches, and soaring high for rebounds. Looking at his basic statistics of 6 points and 4 rebounds might make an average viewer think he's just a regular rookie. You know, someone who could only play a minor, minor role. Not someone who can make an impact on a team with championship aspirations. But, uh, but, if you look at his expanded 36-minute statistics, you'll notice something. The man is a walking double-double machine who can also average two blocks per game. And the scary truth is, he's only getting better and better. For the first 15 NBA games, he only scored in double figures once against New Orleans. But in his last eight games, he's already had seven games in double figures. And not one, not two, but three double-doubles. Now, the big question is, 
can Trace Jackson Davis help the Warriors win the 2024 NBA championship? Um, to be frank with y'all, a lot of people may think I'm crazy to even mention the Warriors in a championship in the same sentence based on the NBA landscape today. But to be perfectly honest, if I had to answer that question, I'd say hell to the yeah. I mean, let's tally up the facts here. Just two short years ago, the Warriors were the champs. Then in 2023, they had the best starting five-man lineup in all the NBA, but just lacked firepower coming off the bench. And now in 2024, alongside with Trace Jackson Davis, they now have the best bench in the league. And I can't help but think just how much better they're going to be, especially as Jackson Davis gets more and more experience. The NBA is really going to regret letting the Warriors draft this dude. And to be perfectly honest, they had so many chances to prevent that from happening. I mean, look here. At 56, the Memphis Grizzlies drafted an international player who hasn't played a single NBA minute yet. At 55, the Indiana Pacers drafted a 6'3 guard who hasn't played a single NBA minute yet. The same is with 54, 53, and as this list goes on, you'll notice that many teams picked players who they're not really using, and thus allowed the Warriors to draft someone who's showing that he has what it takes to put the Warriors back into that championship conversation. I know that currently, with the Warriors hovering at about 500, they might not seem like a team capable of reaching the mountaintop of the NBA, but let's look at the facts again. Chet Holmgren hit a prayer that saved OKC in one game, and in another game, it was a bad luck foul by the Warriors, which allowed OKC to get back into the game to win it in overtime. Then, the Warriors had two games against the Kings and the Clippers, where they were up like 20 points, but shot themselves in the foot and ended up fumbling the game. That four-game swing could have put the Warriors in the third or fourth seed today in the NBA, and we'd be having a completely different conversation right now. Then, there's also the fact that there's still over half a season left for the young guns, like Trace, to improve even further. The man is already developing a solid chemistry with Clay and giving the Splash Brother an outlet to make better decisions. He's already showing glimpses of becoming a good passing center. And game by game, he's just gaining more and more experience in pick and roll plays. In his last eight games, Kerr's been putting him into the game for about 23 minutes per game. And with a net positive rating of 5.1, those minutes are just going to be increasing and increasing. And with more minutes, he's only going to keep improving. You know, when the Warriors finally drafted Trace Jackson Davis at 57, the star out of Indiana tweeted to every other team in the NBA that, Y'all will regret it, I promise you. And the truth is, he's right. The NBA is really going to regret this.